Hi everyone, Scott with Cyberscribe.org and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a DHCP server on this network services virtual machine here and it's obviously Linux and it is CentOS 6.6 .6, that's what I'm working with. So uh, CentOS, this other virtual machine is I'm going to just kind of show you how it uh, obtains that address and I'm going to actually give this via DHCP a uh, static address. So uh, we'll get started with this. I'm in Virtual Machine Manager right here, so one thing I want to show you is go to Connection Details, and if you go to Virtual Networks, if you just create your virtual machine and just go through all the defaults, well, you're going to get on the default uh, network here, and that has its own DHCP server, so it's real easy, it's pretty good, you don't have to worry about IP addressing really or anything like that, but uh, we do want to worry about IP addressing here. So what I did is I created a new network on the 172.20.0.0 and DHCP as you can see is disabled. The only thing to know is where it says here your DHCP range starts at 192, uh, 168.122.2 well that's because dot one is your default gateway and it's going to be the same here. So the default gateway that we want to point our uh, machines on here is 172.20.0.1 okay so just remember that. Alright so what we're going to do is we're going to start on network services here and you can see it's the IP address right there is already statically addressed and uh, CentOS virtual machine will go to this one you can see there is no IP address uh, assigned yet because it's it tried to find a DHCP server and there isn't one so what we're looking at here on the uh, this is a client machine is you're seeing uh, the Etsy sysconfig network scripts of ifcfg ETHO FO and you see on boot yes okay so that you want it to dynamic um, you know as it boots you want it to get that address so you don't have to worry about IP addresses and boot proto is DHCP okay that's why right now it doesn't have a an IP address because there is no DHCP server on this network so we're gonna set that up on this network services here and pretty easy to do we're just gonna go yum install DHCP and we're just going to do that real quick. And what we do is uh, just make a couple configuration file changes. And let me, uh, oop, okay. And so now let's go into CD Etsy DHCP. And you see you can do it for uh, IP version 6 as well. We're just going to do IP version 4. And just go to vidhcpd.conf. DHCPD is the daemon that you're going to start and stop things with. So just be aware of that. And there's not really much here, but uh, it does give you some other man pages and things that you can look at. So I'm just going to create this file from scratch, and uh, you know, it's uh, you can look at the documentation as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to set a default lease time and a maximum. Okay, these are in seconds. So the default lease time is one day. Maximum lease time is two days. Now, that's not required, that's not necessary, but uh, in this case, if, say, computer A connects to the network, after a day, it's going to redo its uh, DHCP configuration and possibly get the same address, possibly get a different one. Okay, if you didn't have these uh, lease times in there, the lease time would be forever. So that's kind of up to you if that's a uh, if that works for you or not. Alright, now let's uh, declare a subnet that we're going to uh, have that uh, DHCP listening on and assigning addresses to. And NetMask. Open some brackets and let's go option routers. Now remember, uh, this 172.20.0.1, that's the default gateway. That's not this network services. So uh, that's the kind of like the virtual router that it's going to be going through. Next is the subnet mask. And just 255s. Next, 
we're going to have the uh, domain name servers and right now I'm just gonna uh, point to a, a different uh, like a different DNS server in the future I'm gonna make a video and I'm gonna set up uh, on this network services machine I'm gonna set up a DNS server here too so then I'll just point it back on itself and also for the NTP I'm gonna do the same thing and but right now I'm just gonna do it right now point it right back on itself and then last thing we need to do here specify a range of addresses to give out we're gonna start at uh, 11 uh, because this network services is statically addressed at 10 and we're gonna go up to 100 All right and that we can close the brackets so one thing to take note of here is this uh, CentOS virtual machine is a web server so what we usually want to do with any kind of server is to have a static IP address assigned to it and we can do that with DHCP as well and that's what I'm going to do right here so all we need is the MAC address and the uh, host name for it so I'm going to say host web serve because that's the that's the host name and let's go option and just specify it again host name web serve dot local domain and next is the MAC address so hardware Ethernet 5254009445 CE. Okay, remember semicolons at the end of all of these. And after that, fixed address. So this is the one that we always want assigned to it 172.20.0.20. All right and let's close that bracket and if you can see the mistake good if not uh, we'll get to it in a second so let's just write that and at that at this point your configuration file is good and you should be ready to start up that uh, DHCP server so let's do that now okay it failed well you might have already seen the mistake that I made but the thing is if you make a mistake in this configuration file it's not going to start up so one way to find out uh, to have it read the configuration file and give you some input is go to just type DHCPD and it'll tell you uh, unexpected end of file semicolon expected line 21 so let's go back up and let's take a look and sure enough near the end I left out purposely that semicolon there okay so let's insert that back in rewrite it and let's do it again and it started okay so that's good so it's working now but we want to make it persistent so what we need to do is go to check config we'll specify the level 3 there is no graphical user interface on this uh, DHCPD on. and we can double check that just grep DHCPD and you can see it's on right there DHCPD6 remember we didn't do that one so don't worry about that too much okay at this point it should be done so now let's go to the CentOS virtual machine here and let's go DH client so uh, if you have it where it's going to where your network is going to start on boot you don't need to do DH client but there might be something well maybe you don't have that checked where it's not automatically starting then you have to run DH client so uh, just something that you know maybe there's an issue maybe maybe you checked something wrong or something but anyways uh, what it's doing is it's searching out that DHCP server and it found it so previous to this DH client command we didn't have as you can see we didn't have an IP address well let's see what we have now we do have an IP address 172.20.0.20 and if you look look on the left side there that's the 
fixed address that we assigned to it. So let's do a ping, let's see if it works, and it works. And after that, uh, you know, if you have other servers, all you do is just go into that uh, dhcpd.conf file on your uh, the machine that's that's hosting your DHCP server, and just add more hosts, and uh, you know, just get their MAC addresses and put in some fixed addresses. That way, you have static addressing, and you also have that DHCP server going for anybody else who joins that network. So it comes in handy, and uh, like I said, it's a uh, it's a good start for towards building up a a network infrastructure. And that's all I had for you today. And uh, stay tuned for future videos.